All right, well, I, if you watch the show, you know how the process works for the most part. But I'm just going to explain to you kind of how it works, um, you know, and just kind of start bringing people through. But the general premise behind what I do, what I do, is that I work as a clairvoyant. So I basically get impressions, I see symbols, and I just kind of have to go with wherever that takes me. Um, okay. And just deliver that to you in a way that's going to make sense. So obviously when I do readings, you know, the goal is just to connect to as much information as possible. I don't like general information, I really like specifics. Um, so as far as when details come through, I'll probably jump across all of family. Um, so family you might know, family you might not. Um, generally I aim for about 80% of the information to connect or make sense. And there might be a 20% portion where we have to either ask other family members um, or get that validation from another family member, which happens. Okay. Um, but generally, the goal is just to, to ensure that you know, what's coming through can connect. Um, if something makes sense, totally let me know. If something doesn't, feel free to let me know. Totally fine. I really value validation. Um, and if something doesn't quite make sense, then we can kind of try to figure out either why it's coming through or where it could fit. Um, okay. But I'm just going to kind of start. I have my notepad here, um, and I'm just going to scribble. Okay. And then I'm going to connect to energy. Um, now, on the show, as you watch, I probably you, you see that I work with objects oftentimes. Um, and obviously, in this case, I don't have one. So um, on your end, if you, if you have anything in front of you or yeah. along those lines, yeah, because I feel like I, I, I would be good for you to hold on to that. Um, and that will kind of help the connection. So I'm just going to start scribbling, and we'll see, we'll see what comes through. Immediately, um, I'm going to talk about two women that I'm going to bring through. Um, that I have to talk about quite heavily. I have okay. two um, women coming through. I have one woman who's referencing to the name Elizabeth. So that's either who they are, who they're with, or a reference to a name. But there's an acknowledgement of either Elizabeth or if someone has an Elizabeth connection. Do you know of anyone within family who would either have the name Elizabeth? I'm referencing Elizabeth. It's coming through very clearly. My daughter, Ava Elizabeth. Okay, great. Uh, and she's the only one who has that name? Um, there's an Elizabeth on her dad's side and there is one on my mom's side. I feel like one of them is referencing to someone else. One would be referencing to daughter. When I'm referencing to daughter, though, I'm referencing to February, like, and then I'm seeing balloons. So what would the significance that's be that? Her, that's her birthday. That's her birthday. Okay, perfect. Ava Elizabeth's birthday's in February. Okay, nice. I'm going to kind of go all across the board here. I have two <laughs> women that I would kind of consider like grandmotherly type figures that I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. kind of connect with and talk about. One feels like she lived a really good duration of life from her perspective. The other passed away, what I'm thinking is like either in her 60s or she's showing me early, like a little too early in the way this is coming across. The one that I'm interested in, and this will just be good, like just yes or no. Um, so do you understand the woman who would be, she's, like, she's saying to talk about passing away in my 60s, passing away in my 60s, because this yeah. is way too early. So you know who that would be for you? Yes, Perfect. absolutely. Okay, I feel like I'm connecting to her. Um, I have to talk about, there's like a lot kind of coming through with this. Um, she's making a reference to your, well, do you, do you have a son? Because she's referencing the yeah. son, son, son. Yeah. So she's making that connection with him. Um, and she's around him very strongly and very intensely. And she comes through so much like a mother. And she's around him. And she's referencing that she's aware of the surgery that had to be done. Or it's like a surgery. I, I see it going fine. But she's referencing to the head or the head surgery. But it's like yeah. a procedure. I personally had a procedure done at um. one point. She's referencing we, to something. We found him unconscious. He was gone. A TV fell on his head. Wow. And we resuscitate him. Okay. And he talks about heaven. Wow. That's amazing because she's coming through and referencing. Like, there's this reference very strongly to I'm around him. I'm around him. Um, now, did he need it? And he, I'm correct in saying he needed a procedure or a surgery done after he this? He was in a coma. Um, okay. He should have had a surgery. Okay. They have no medical explanation. I've been told as recently as last week he's a medical miracle. Wow. That's incredible. I'm so glad he made it. Because um, this kind of comes across almost either like a traumatic. Traumatic would, brain injury. injury. Yeah. It's, it's a TBI. Okay. Because she's referencing to this very strongly, and it's like the way this comes across is like people on the other side were there during this process. I have to talk about either your partner or your spouse or something along those lines. She's making a joke about how your partner either works like weird hours or like works a ton. She's referencing, she's showing me a clock, and she's referencing to the hours being weird, but then also referencing to the duration of work, and she's saying that you have to do a lot on your own. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, he left two weeks ago for Texas, and um, I'm by myself right now. That would be it. Okay, that makes sense. Because um, I feel like there's this emphasis on like, like work kind of basically coming, you know, as First. a difficult situation um, in the way this comes across. But I feel like there's this acknowledgement of like the work or the work distance. 
Um, I do have to talk about, let's, and there's some details that might click right now. We'll just kind of go all across the board. Um, I have this older woman that's coming through that's separate that I want to <laughs> connect with, and she's lovely, and I'm going to connect to both. They're both like talking okay. my head off. Um, first, I have to ask, who's Jeff? Jeff? Yes. My brother. That would be your brother. Okay, cool. Um, I have a woman that's coming through that's wanting to reference to Jeff and Jeff and Jeff. I have to talk about this, though, because um, I have a woman coming through who's acknowledging, and I hope I'm not wrong in saying this, but she's giving me more of a stronger impression when she's coming through this particular woman, and it's not the woman who died in her 60s. It's separate. Um, this woman's acknowledging, like, herself very strongly, and usually what happens is generally in traditional circumstances, we'll have a grandfather that passes, and then we'll have a grandmother that passes, because men tend to die before women. Yep. But in this case, she's referencing to herself exclusively. We've never met him. Okay. He died before we were born. Right. So she would be the only one that would have that connection with you. Connection, yeah. Okay. And his he's actually named after him, oh. my brother. Okay. Is, it's Jeff. His middle name is my grand great-grandfather's name. That would be it, because I feel like I'm having to make the reference. Harry. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. There is a reference to a concern on your mom's side that I have to just reference to this. Okay. This woman that comes through for both you and your mom um, is acknowledging that she didn't want there to be a concern about health. And the reason being is she's talking about how there on that side is a genetic predisposition to certain cancers at a bit of an earlier age. But there's an acknowledgment right. of like this incident that I have to refer to. Um, and just coming through and it's like I'm not worried about it I'm not concerned about this turning into cancer but there's an acknowledgement that there would have to be a biopsy done at some point we're just good to keep in mind it might have already been done but there's a reference I feel like that probably would affect the feminine system and would probably affect uh, women on, on that side primarily the one that passed in her 60s she comes through completely different than the other one um, when they're coming through but both come through very strongly um, oh, yeah. It's just, it's just like the, the one that passed in her 60s as she's coming through is there an S initial connected to her Sheila. Okay. Sorry. Perfect. So with Sheila and the way this is coming across, she's like giving me a really strong feeling and I feel like I really am connecting to her. Um, but she makes <laughs> it a point to acknowledge that she's very much around your son and then references also to daughter and a connection with that. I have like, he has a little sister too. Okay, nice. Um, there's a reference to a pregnancy or a concern for how a pregnancy goes. I don't know if one, which having me talk about your pregnancies in particular. She's, for whatever reason, having me feel like one might have been more difficult than the other two. Think about the it. The last child, I was, I, I had like um, a one-year-old and I was nine months pregnant and I was induced early. Um, okay. She was early and there was a lot of complications afterwards. Right. Okay. And yeah. then that ultimately worked out though and there's this acknowledgement of that and there's an awareness of like, I know that this pregnancy um, towards the end when it comes to that it was like a little little tough, but there's an acknowledgement that that works out He's referencing to April and talking about an annual um, Candle thing, but it's yearly, but it would be in April She died in April and um We all like light up a candle on Facebook nice. um, so to speak right. and we always share a story on the day she passed who has the 17th connection or the seven, like if someone's born on the 17th, passed on the 17th. My daughter, Ava, Okay, so on um, February 17th. Nice. As she's coming through, she's immediately making me talk um, about how proud of you she is for being able to be where you're at today because she's talking about how, she's like, this girl has to do a lot on her own. <laughs> and it's not that you don't have support, by all means you do, but she acknowledges just how much you've had to do to get where you're at and she's proud of you because she knows that you've had to do what you've had to do. And there's an acknowledgement of that and a pride behind that in being able to be where you are today. And she really comes across again as like a mother figure, so strongly. Yes, she was. And she's just, she's amazing. I mean, some people come through as grandmothers, she comes through as like a mom. And that yes. really is, is special. Um, I, I have a question, I don't know if this will come through. Sure. I was in recovery when she passed. Right. And I didn't get to go to the funeral. Sure. And she didn't get to see me graduate a recovery program. Right. She acknowledges this sense of her coming through like a mother would for a daughter and a pride because though she didn't get to see that in life, she get, did get to see that on the other side. Do you have her jewelry box or like a, a flat box on a desk? I have, um, this wasn't, she gave, I gave this to her mother-in-law. Okay. And she gave it back to me after my great-grandmother passed away. Interesting. Okay. And I have like an altar to both these women. Right. And, um, 
I'm holding this. This is a jewelry box I gave my great grandmother. Perfect. Which was Sheila's mother in law. Right. That makes sense. And particularly because you're holding on to, because I'm saying this flat surface that I'm referencing to also, um, there's either a reference to like a red rose connection or some form of a red rose connection, but I would keep it in mind. The Sheila connection that we're making, she's referencing to after the fact that she passed away, she feels like in some way she was kind of the glue that kept some things together. And she's aware mm. of some of the family <sighs> situations that happened after where people just kind of dissipate or, or separate. She's referencing to the name Kim and talking about Kim. Kim, That's Kim, my Kim. Sister. Okay. That's um, my sister. She's placing her over here. So where's Kim currently? She's um lives in Alabama, but we live an hour and a half apart. Okay. Um, see each other a few times a year, maybe. Okay. She's referencing to this for whatever reason. I feel like we the way that I can describe this is she's emphasizing the importance that this relationship be yeah, men mended and maintained, basically. Because as this is coming across, she's putting Kim over here and you over here, but it's not necessarily geography. It's like, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's more than that. What seems like a bit of a straying away and then a referencing to a coming together. Okay. Um, and yeah, just, yeah. Um, I think everybody's having a, had a hard time accepting um, my past and yeah. forgiving me sure. and, and learning that I'm not that same person. I have to talk about the diabetes. She's referencing the diabetes and heart. She's putting it together for okay. me. Um, and she's referencing, talk about the diabetes. Let me see what this is. She's not referencing to him on the other side, though. So he's oh, still with us, correct? Here. Yeah, he's <laughs> okay. still with us. Cool. Uh, she, there's a reference to like medication or a shift in in treatment. So if someone like is taking one medicine and has to get a shift of, for a different medicine, she's referencing okay. to diabetes very strongly with him. Um, she's referencing to him over the past kind of six months. I'm referencing to some health related stuff that I need to talk about. Some of it coming from old stuff. Some of it new. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Since she's passed away. Right. Um, he's not taking care of himself. Yeah. He was up here staying with my parents and um, he, he didn't want to, he doesn't want to get up. He doesn't want to do anything yeah. at all. And because he feels like he should have went first. Right. It wasn't supposed to happen like that. She wasn't sick. Right. When he does pass away, which doesn't mean anytime soon, when he does pass, she will be the first person there to take okay. him, and he's not going to go alone. So please know that's that. the love of his life. Absolutely. She used to be married to his brother. <gasps> oh wow! I <laughs> and, love. Uh, it. And they've, I mean, probably since this, they've since the '60s. Yeah. Um, they've been together. Wow. So. She is talking about to keep in mind the mental thing. Okay. Um, and like he looks pretty sharp for for being there, but for whatever reason, she's acknowledging like don't. And it could be referencing to him kind of being more into, like isolative or like not being as mobile. But she's yeah. talking about kind of his personality and we might see kind of some, she's acknowledging some shifts in personality. Yeah. We're in the early stages of it, but she's aware of it. And she's basically coming across with this and acknowledging like, don't take this personally, don't take this personally. There's a reference to Johnny Cash for some reason. <laughs> um, and I don't know why that is. Now, on one note, there's a reference to a Johnny, but there is actually a reference to a Johnny Cash reference. So um, yeah. For that, one, yeah. the, the Ring of Fire movie, like, and listening, growing up on that, but I remember them watching that movie together. But do you know who's the nurse? His, her daughter, my aunt, okay. Regina. Why is she showing me her by water? Um, They live in Florida. Okay, cool. That would yeah. be the connection. From her perspective, she's like, I'm here, and then I'm not. And that, as is coming across for her, her transition was actually relatively quick. Um, yeah, it was an allergic reaction to yeah. perfectly healthy right. and um so s sudden by time they figured she wouldn't go get up and go to the doctors or anything and by the time she got there there was nothing they could do from an antibiotic right. medicine for a cut on a finger yeah and um so like i really struggled i didn't get to say goodbye sure. i didn't get to go to the funeral she acknowledges that she's actually aware that she's still been written to She's talking about either the letter or to talk about the writing. I feel like I'm, I'm writing to her, so if I'm certain about this. So if it doesn't connect for you, look into it. There's right. this reference to, like, thank you for writing to me. So someone wrote to her after, because I'm, I'm still saying this. It's almost like we're keeping a journal. She is talking about the fact that she still knows that she's still verbally spoken out loud to. 
Um, and she's very aware of that. And she's joking about, I don't know if I'm back in the house or what's it's funny. She's like acknowledging being I around. I literally me. talked to her. Yeah. Um, I, I've bugged her for months to make this happen. I think she got sick of me. That's so <laughs> funny. It worked to out. To make me win. Yeah. So, so sweet. She's having me bring up the ring. Um, there's a reference to two articles of jewelry. One went missing. And the reference is to the missing piece of jewelry. And the acknowledgement is like, don't worry about it. It, it is something within family. It's either been discussed, but like, don't worry about it. It's just stuff, basically, is the message. She's referencing, she wishes more photos would have been taken of her. And it's sweet, because she's like, she's fabulous <laughs> when she's coming. She is, family. and we don't have many pictures of her, like, at all. Right. <laughs> so I have probably more recent ones than most right. people would. Yeah. And I was given one piece of jewelry. Um, that was the only thing I, well, I've got two pieces, but one's more meaningful to me. Right. As far as with the jewelry, though, it's interesting because there is this reference to a sentimental feeling there. Um, now, which grandmother would have passed away while someone was pregnant? But she's having me talk about, I'm, I'm with the baby, I'm with the baby, I'm with the baby. So when that happens, that's an acknowledgement of, like, someone's pregnant. Oh, my brother's wife, I think, was pregnant at the time. Okay, think, at the time. Like, somebody was pregnant. Right. Oh, was it my sister? Somebody, oh, my brother's, my brother's um, girlfriend was pregnant at the time. Okay. April was the passing, February was the birth, but there's a reference to May. Um, My dad, her son's birthday's in May. Okay. I feel like I have to talk about him. There's a joke about a mustache. I don't know what this is. Uh, he's got a mustache. Okay. I, I don't know I, if there's a joke about a walrus. Like, I, it's the most random thing. It's gone back and forth over the years about shaving it and stuff. <laughs> and I think he shaved it at one point, but... Right. Yeah. I just don't think it wouldn't look quite right. I feel like I have to grow it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't funny. look the same. Because with him, I have to talk about just a, a susceptibility to both sleep apnea and um, blood pressure related issues. So just good to keep that in mind. And then he has a yeah. susceptibility to an issue in his right knee. In his right, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Are you aware of any of those health issues? He's currently? got sleep apnea. He has, he had one of the knees replaced. Yep. Maybe both of them, but he still has issues, and I'm pretty sure he's got blood pressure okay. um, issues. Your grandmother is proud of you for overcoming the most difficult part of your life, and she's acknowledging um, that she's proud of you for overcoming, overcoming the situation that you dealt with um, outside of the recovery thing. It's kind of what contributed to it. And um, she's proud of where you're at romantically right now, and is glad you got away from that other person. Maybe like we're sort of in a separation right now. And yep. it's the first time I've been okay with, Right. I can do this on my own. Sure. Nobody knows about that yeah. at all. Nobody. Yeah. Oh, wow. I wonder about my husband's parents. I've never met them. Sure. They've been gone a long time. And, and it's just, sometimes I, I feel so disconnected I don't even know what the word is. Like, do they know me? Right. Do they know that they have grandkids? When this comes through, it, you know, we, you being here, definitely you pick more up on, on that energy. But there is a reference, um, let me see what this is, to a man on that side. Now, do you know if anybody dealt with, a, any men would have had a, I'm going to blackness in the chest, on his side. So we're, we're going to just kind of try to figure this out. I got a, I have a man coming through, so everybody's seeing the blackness in the chest. He's talking about how this wasn't necessarily instantaneous, so it's not like a heart attack. With lung cancer. It, he he had, would have to be more drawn out. Yeah. Yeah, it was a long drawn out, and he was in hospice. Right. My, my father-in-law. Okay, so that would be your husband. Okay, because I'm referencing to... Husband's father. Husband's father. And he did want it to be known that he was holding on at the time that he passed, and he's acknowledging referencing to waiting. Um, where are the three siblings on that side? My husband has two sisters right. and one brother. Oh. One of them's like, oh, um, was pregnant at the same time as oh, okay. his, my husband's mom. Right. They had babies at the same time. Wow. Okay. So that, so she wasn't, she was an adult out of the house. Right. He wasn't a father to her because she was grown. He's acknowledging that he was thankful that he was actually given permission to go. And that was important for him because he's a very strong, stubborn man. <laughs> And <laughs> when he comes across it, it's the only way I can, I can put it. There's a reference to two Stevens. Two Stevens. Two Steve, Stevie, Stevens. I'm getting like some form of Stevens, a Stevens. Stevens, my husband. Okay. Um, his oldest son is Christopher Steven. He has his middle name. Okay, perfect. 
like, yeah, my husband's oldest son. I would say your family kind of comes through more strongly for you than, than his side, but they definitely yeah. pop in in reference to, you know, the kids and things along those lines. Right. Um, very clearly. Now... Wouldn't be a mother, uh, my husband's mother coming through. Let's like. see. You know, <laughs> grandmother's having me joke about the hair color and changing the hair color, all, like, all the time. There's a joke about this. Um, there's okay. a reference to like either I, just changing the hair color or I feel like I just dyed my hair. I lived with her and I got my hair color. Like I had a problem with coloring my hair. Okay. I'd do it myself and mess it up. Right. And then I'd convince her to let me go get it fixed and it'd cost more. Um, and I still do those things okay. as an adult. There's a funny reference though in the way this is coming across of like, I feel like I'm not just sticking to one color. I feel like I'm doing different, like different colors, like mixing it up. And it's like, all right, slow down with the hair color. <laughs> Oh my God, because I bought pink pastel color and, and bleach. I was going to bleach it and dye it pink pastel. Exactly. <laughs> but I was like, I haven't, I changed my mind. It did like purple. <laughs> right. I love it. It's so funny because it's just referencing all these, I feel like I'm going through all these changes. He's referencing um, to a memory of the hand like being held. And I don't know what this is. Very sweet. And she's actually tracing, like I feel like I'm tracing on someone's palm or tracing on someone's hand. But there's um, a memory with this, and I would keep it in mind. Um, my son was in a coma, and I don't know if, like, I didn't leave his side while he was in a coma. And um, I kept holding his hand, thinking, and talking to him, and talking to her. Like, I feel like it has, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like, I felt like he could understand me if I held his hand, right. because he was hooked up to the ventilator and all. Yeah. And he talks about, heaven and someone holding his hand in heaven. Nice. She's referencing to your son and then talking about um, either the learning learning issue. I feel like I have a learning problem. Um, uh, but there's an acknowledgement that I feel like this works out. She's saying by the time he's seven, I feel like this either, she's putting an emphasis on age seven for some reason. <laughs> and then I feel like things work, like ultimately they work out. Um, so how yeah. old is your son currently? He's six. He's six um, He's currently, he got tested at school. Um, and they think he has autism. Okay. Um, he has a learning disability, a reading disability. Right. And we're really struggling this year. And it's been a long road. Right. Like, we go to the doctors tomorrow actually to find out if there's going to be medication. I mean, it's just now starting the recovery process. Sure. Um, and hopefully getting a diagnosis. Right. Whether he's autistic or not. Sure. When she comes through with this, she's acknowledging very clearly, it looks like he will learn differently, but she's saying um, and referencing very clearly, I, I have to talk about a special ed program. And she's He's in special ed now. To, to it changing though. So I have to emphasize this. She's talking about her we're in one program and we either are in one and then we shift to another or we shift out of it. But she's talking about the They're shift. They're talking about out. once he gets that diagnosis that he would, his services in special ed are going to change. Right. They're going to, with, if, you know, sure. if it's autism, that's like, I guess the question. Right. She's acknowledging after the age of seven, I feel like a lot of this improves. So please know that. Okay. All right. So I, of course, this that's been cool. hard. <laughs> that I want to give you the opportunity to ask any questions. Um, do you have any questions about your personal life or anyone that I've connected with? Um, I feel sort of stuck and lost. Like I still haven't figured out at 30. I'm scared I, I'm not going to have a future of, like, figuring out who I am and what am I supposed to be doing sure. in life. Funny enough, there's a random reference to either nails. I'm saying nails. <laughs> and uh, But it's not, it's like, okay, hear me out. This sounds nuts. I was selling Jamberry nails. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah. And okay. I was like, yeah, I tried, okay, I've, I've tried almost everything. Sure. Makeup, and But the one of the most recent was Jamberry nails. Okay. <laughs> funny because there's a joke about it and it's like a brief stint and I feel like it, it's not a long-term thing it's like a short-term thing and there is yeah. an acknowledgement um, again I'm, I'm referencing to cosmetology but then in the way this comes across there's something I want to mention because one you'll have an opportunity to either sell makeup or and it's kind of a weird thing um, it's an opportunity that will ultimately come into play where like either we sell make like I'm thinking of Arbonne are you familiar with Arbonne yeah <laughs> yeah so not not something I necessarily would super encourage but there is a reference to having an opportunity to do that. I feel like we want to kind of get away from that. There is a I, reference, though, to, again, aesthetic. And I'm looking at, like, my face. So how seriously have you ever considered, like, cosmetology or skincare or makeup? I really, really did. Like, my passion was modeling, sure. and that didn't work out. So I've looked into going to school, and everything's always been put on hold. Sure. 
um, because I'd like to be in the fashion world. Right. Well, I kind of see the full package. I'm seeing now hair, makeup, like everything. So that to me would generally indicate like a, a, a compilation of all of it. And I, and I like that a lot and I would encourage that, but that's kind of what I'm seeing way more than anything like short, short term. <laughs> One of the things I do have to mention with this is coming directly from grandmother figure. As particularly as Sheila's coming through, there's a reference to don't worry about the school situation because I feel like we're looking into it, we're looking like looking forward to it, and then I feel like it just slips away or it's like it, we end up figuring out that we can't do it. And then there's yeah. acknowledgement of like, go back, think about it again, think about it again. <laughs> um, the reason being is that even if you don't go that direction completely in the future, just taking the steps to do that and to see whether you really would like it or, or you know, right. experiencing it, I think will just give you a clearer idea. And I feel like that in itself will really help. So you have a question. Um, what would that question be? Is there any a possible sometime sooner re resolution to um, a settlement? My fear is it's going to happen, but it's not going to be what I thought it would be. Sure. It wouldn't be enough to make any difference. I feel like I have to talk about this. I do see ultimately this resolving. I feel like we do reach a resolve, um, but I feel like... So to, to put this in the way that I, I would put it, I don't see you coming out badly due to this. I don't necessarily it seeing from a financial perspective it securing us completely, but it is it is enough from my perspective in the way that this right. comes across. There's also just really good to keep in mind a reference to like a tax issue. There's a reference to a tax issue, and it's just like it's an annoying headache, and it's like we have to get over we have to overcome it, but it's fine and it ends up working out. The last thing, sure. like I'm scared to ask this. No is, problem. I know love life you don't like touching on too much, but like. Sure. I'm scared, like, I'll never have someone for the rest of my life right. with kids like mine. Sure. Um, Aww. Because things aren't so good right now. Sure. Um, I don't know if that's going to work out, if he's going to make changes that need to be done. Right. Um, I mean, what I would say, and I can only say this, really, based on what, with, with what's coming through, there's a reference to Stephen. There's a reference to a communication issue. There's a reference to the fact that he does not know how to communicate completely, uh, thoroughly when it comes to talking about feelings and emotions. He's a man. It happens. Yeah, That's not right. particularly unique. But there is an acknowledgement in him having to be careful with what he says, how he says it, and also, like, when we come to a resolve to an issue, making sure that that same issue doesn't come up again, just in a different way. And it's like the same problem at its root, it's... but it has multiple manifestations. When it comes to the situation, um, Ultimately, I think all of this emphasis really is on your kids, like right now. Um, your daughter yeah. might show uh, sides of being kind of ADD, ADHD, then not being able to pay attention. Don't worry about it. It'll resolve and she'll grow out of it, okay? Oh my God. <laughs> I've, it's so crazy you said that. She got tested at school and we're having a lot of issues. They thought she was autistic. Right. But they said it's pointing to ADHD. Yes. <laughs> She's a ball of energy, right. insomniac. You have a lot of people that came through, so I, I really, it was awesome getting I to connect. Like, it's what I've asked for. I've been bugging my grandmother, the mom, Sheila, right. for, for, since she passed away, oh. to give me some type of sign. I see red cardinals all the time. Yes. And um, her, I'm holding her owl necklace, oh. owl charm. So. I love that. And, and it's validation right. for me, my son's memory of heaven. Sure. You know, because some people, like, it was... It's hard to process that, yeah. but I really feel like he was on the other side for a moment. Absolutely. True blessing, oh, Tyler. I'm so your glad. gift from God is it's beautiful and your spirit's so beautiful. Thank you so much. You are an angel. You really are. Your gift is unlike anything else. Tyler is young to have that ability. I feel blessed that I've met him. Hollywood Medium with Tyler Henry, only on E!